In this video, I'd like to work through an example showing how a projection operator works using a commonly used orthonormal basis in two-dimensional Euclidean space and show that this basis obeys the completeness relationships that we saw in previous videos. So in two-dimensional Euclidean space or regular space in a plane, a set of orthonormal basis vectors that are commonly used are the uh, unit, uh, these should be unit vectors along X and Y. And these are typically denoted by I hat and J hat. So if you have a two dimensional space, then I hat tells you uh, is the unit vector along the X direction and J hat is the unit vector along the Y direction. And these serve as an orthonormal basis in this space. So any vector in two dimensional space can be expressed as a linear superposition of uh, these two unit vectors. To follow our notation using KETS, we are going to denote the I hat vector by KET I. And this will be a column vector with components one and zero. And we'll denote the J hat vector as cat J. And this will be a column vector with component zero one. So the first thing I'd like to show is that this forms a complete basis. And by that, I mean that it will obey the completeness relationship that we saw. That says that if you have a basis with n orthonormal uh, elements, then the sum of their outer product will be equal to the unit operator. In this case, if we carry out the sum, we only have uh, two components. So this will be the outer product of the element I with itself and the outer product of element J with itself, where I is denoting this vector and J uh, denotes this vector. So as we saw before, uh, cat I is represented by a column vector. Bra i is represented by a row vector. And similarly for j. And if uh, you carry out this multiplication, then you get the sum of these two matrices, which just gives you uh, the identity matrix. And in linear algebra, this is uh, the unit operator. So when, if you multiply a vector by the identity matrix, you just get back that same vector. So this shows that these two orthonormal unit vectors are uh, form a complete basis set. The next thing I'd like to show is that the projection operator that we saw before uh, really does project a general state into uh, one of these two components. Okay, so we're going to consider a general uh, state, so to speak, in two-dimensional Euclidean space. So it will have an X component X and a Y component Y. And uh, we'll see that if you project it uh, with the projection operator uh, I, uh, that constitutes, that's made up of the elements I, it's going to project it along its X component. And if you do it with Y, it'll project this vector along its Y component.
So for the X projection, the projection operator for that is given by this, which we saw before just gives you uh, this matrix. And uh, we'll denote this general state as cat E, just to have a handle to reference it. So if we apply this projection operator to our general state E, then what we get is a multiplication of this matrix with this general vector. And this gives us a vector X zero. So we've projected our general state that had components X and Y only into its X component. So you get a vector that has an X component X and zero Y component. Okay, so this is the X projection of this general state. For the Y projection, the operator for that is formed by this outer product. And we saw before that this gives you this matrix for this particular example. So if you now try to operate on our general state, you get this and carrying out this matrix multiplication, you get a new column vector with components uh, zero Y. So this is the Y projection of our general state along the Y axis because it's only giving us the Y component of our general state. There's no component along the X direction. So I hope this makes it a bit more clear how this uh, abstract way that we define the projection operator, uh, what it really means in a more familiar example. In the next video, we'll present the, the sixth and final postulate of quantum mechanics, where we uh, define the time evolution of a state through the Schrodinger equation.